So I'll just read the, the wording in the book. I deleted it. It says, replace the force system acting on the frame by a resultant force and specify where its line of action intersects member A to B measured from point A. So first of all, we look at where's the force system. We have this force, this force, and that force. Those are my, that's my three force system. Actually, I deleted also the magnitudes of those forces. In the problem, they have to have magnitudes, so it's 350 pounds. F2 is 250 pounds, and F3 is 220 pounds. So those are the three forces. And they say we want to represent a, a equivalent loading to this frame that has a single resultant force. Okay, we've done that before, so we can do it a little quicker. So the resultant force would need to be equal to the three forces that are put onto the system. And those three forces, uh, you can write this in vector equation, or you can do it in scalar. So the force of the resultant in the x and the force of the resultant in the y is equal to the F1 in the x, F2 in the x, F3 in the x versus F1 in the y plus F2 in the y plus F3 in the y. Because it's 2D, typically we just do a scalar analysis. For this one, F1 in the x, I'm going to try and tuck the solution in right here. What is that? Just look at the illustration. Here's F1. So negative 350, right? Negative 350, and the units would be the pound. All right, how about F2 in the X? You're going to, yeah, four <laughs> fifths, so you pick off that component, uh, and it's in the negative X, so you put the direction down as the sign. And uh, F3 in the X? We have this angle of 45 degrees. Cosine 45 degrees. All right. Um, is this going to be a plus on it? Yes. And then you're responsible when you do a scalar analysis for the directions. And so now we can add those up. And when you add them up, it comes to a magnitude of FR and the X is negative 394.44 pound. We're not asked to represent that as a final answer. So keep at least five significant digits and maybe store it in your calculator. That's a recommended practice because you're going to need it in another step. You do the same thing in the Y, FR and the Y, and because we did it in the X successfully, let's say we can do it in the Y, and it comes in negative 305.56 pounds. So if it said, to give me the magnitude of that resultant force, that would just be square both of them, add them and take the square root. And you come in with the resultant magnitude of 499 pounds, and we would box that. And that would be the answer that we're looking for. The next part says, determine the angle between the resultant force and the x, of the negative x-axis, which is... And, so a lot of times on 2D problems, they'll put a vector like this, and they'll say this is the angle of the vector with respect to the positive x-axis measured counterclockwise. Or they'll say from the positive x-axis, theta measured in the clockwise. Or they say the negative x-axis measured in the counterclockwise or the negative x-axis measured in the clockwise. Now, here are our two values of the f of r x and f of r y. Of these four choices, which one really makes sense? You know, if you put it at the origin right there, which quadrant is that force pointing in? The third quadrant, right. And so if it's pointing in the third quadrant, it would be with respect to the negative x axis 
measured in the counterclockwise direction. So, uh, let me do this. Let me ask you to actually uh, make that calculation. The way you would represent it, it would be theta is equal to blah, blah, blah degrees with a little illustration showing it's measured from the negative x and going around. So I'm going to do what I do in my other class that I teach. I'm going to stop, pause, and see if you can make that calculation correctly. So when three or four people make that calculation. 37.8 degrees. And so if you wanted to, there is a very good representation of the, not only the magnitude of the force, but the direction of the force, that force vector. That is the resultant force vector. Now, the next part of the problem, and I wish I hadn't deleted it, so I encourage you to look at it in the textbook. It says, specify where its line of action intersects member A to B. Well, we have to find member A to B. There's point A, there's point B. So this is the member A to B. And what you want to do is find where that resultant force's line of action needs to intersect member A to B measured from point A. So measuring up from point A, some distance D. So what you're going to do is replace the three-force system by a single resultant force. At that, it's going to have a line of action that may cut right through here. And that would have a distance D measured upward. And now why would they have the line of action of that force with a distance D above A? Why, why would they describe that? It's common in the textbook to ask the student to make that calculation. Exactly, the moment. It's got to have the three forces put a moment onto this object. All right, And so what you're going to do is place that resultant force such that it, it generates an equivalent moment on my frame. And so the basic equation is, is that I like to start like this. My, my simple system and my original system, they have to have the same moment generated by the simple system and the moment generated by the original system, and I have to pick a point. Now, because we're measuring D from point A, it's logical to pick point A. But if you solve a couple of these problems, you could pick any point. It'll give you the same answer. It's just going to be more tedious in the algebra. Okay, so you say my original system, what would be that notation? Calculate the moment that the first force induces about point A, add that to the moment that the second force creates about point A, and the moment that the third force creates about point A. That's the right-hand side of this moment equation, this consistency, just like up here. We had the single resultant force must equal to the sum of the forces that act on my object. And over here, if I have this force applied, we know its magnitude, 499. We know its orientation. We could come in here and draw an angle and put 37.8 degrees down from the negative x. What would be my equation to calculate that moment that that single resultant force creates about point A? Can I pause and make sure? That I know you probably got it, and I know some other students got it because I can see by your body languages, but I got a sense that not everybody's got it. So I want to give enough people time to get it, okay? And guess what's going to come into the equation over here? I better, it better come in with my unknown that I'm going to solve for. It better, better have D, the distance, in that equation, okay? So let me, how do I do this? All right, let me do this to help. If I decompose this f of r back into components that were in the x and y direction or axes, I could decompose it into f, r, and the y. Now, I'm showing it downward, right? So that I'm showing it that it's got downward direction. 
what you could do is if you could come over here, get rid of the negative sign, and you could show an arrow like this. It's equivalent, right? I'm saying FRY is um, 305.56 pounds downward. There's a couple ways to write the answer. True? Okay. Likewise, I could decompose to get this one, which would be, you could draw it like that with with, with leave a plus there, get rid of that negative sign. It's like in the negative horizontal direction, in the negative x direction for f of rx. So what I was looking for was to go ahead and put, let me ask this question, does f of ry, that component of the force, resultant force, does that induce a moment about point A? f r y, it goes straight down, right? It doesn't. It doesn't. It, why? Because its line of action goes right through the point A. The only component is the horizontal, which is F of Rx. And which way does F of Rx make it want to rotate around point A? It makes it want to rotate. So I'd put this times the moment arm distance, and it would make it want to rotate in the counterclockwise. I think at this point, most of you could finish out the problem, but let's work it a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to just run out of room here. What is the moment that force one induces about point A? Is it 350 pound times? I got to probably uncover the answer. Um, it's right in there, isn't it? So, uh, some, okay, okay, Three, is it 350 pounds times either 2.5 foot or 4 foot? That's the cho choice a lot of students will struggle with. It's times 4, isn't it? It's the line of action and then that perpendicular distance coming up. So it's 4 foot. Okay, and that makes it want to rotate in the? Counterclockwise. Okay. <coughs> How about now F of uh, 2, the second force, this one? There's a couple ways to do this, right? How, how would you do it? How would you calculate the moment that the second force induces about point A? Yeah. I, would, I would do this. Most people would do this. They would decompose it into the uh, four-fifths of the 250 pounds that's in the X, which is, do the math, and I think that turns out to be uh, 200 pounds in the X, horizontal. And then the three-fifths coming down of the 250 pounds, isn't that uh, 150? 150 pounds. And now I think I have the 200-pound horizontal that induces a moment with the same moment arm of, so we have 200 pounds times four foot in the counterclockwise, and then the 150 pounds, what's its moment arm distance? 2.5, right, 2.5, right? And it's inducing a moment in the counterclockwise. And then the last one over here, you would do the same thing, you would bust it into F3X and F3Y. The F3X, which way does it want to make it rotate? Clockwise. How about the F3Y? It makes it want to rotate clockwise. So uh, you're going to have to add these. So what I would do is I would put a negative sign and change those to the same direction. So you can just add them. A negative on the counterclockwise. All right. So at this point, we have everything in the equation known except for D. And when you solve for D, it comes in at around 2.98 foot. There's more digits to it, but let's round it down to three significant digits. All right. 